Good afternoon, everyone. It's great to be here. Well, as he said, my name is Patrice Saguet. I'm here with uh, Vicky Norris. And uh, you want to something very exciting. We're going to be uh, pretty much making a case for marketplace evangelism and discipleship. Uh, of course, that's been what's been happening throughout the week, and we're going to just kind of add our own voice uh, to that. Uh, Vicky and I met, uh, uh, what, about two years ago or so uh, in a biblical entrepreneurship class. Uh, she, was, uh, she had built quite a name for herself in the Portland, in the Northwest area as an entrepreneur and, uh, and, a, and a speaker and a communicator, uh, media personality. Uh, but during this time, uh, Vicky was uh, facing a, a unique situation that nobody knew unless you were in her heart. Uh, Vicky, tell us a bit about that. Well, I'm Vicki Norris, and I'm an organizing expert. I run a company called Restoring Order, and my uh, staff goes into people's homes and businesses and help them dig out of chaos and clutter. And so along the way I, uh, of building this business over 12 years, I had sort of developed uh, some media as a part of that. The media really came to me. What happened was they started calling and I started doing morning shows and then HGTV called and so I did a show on HGTV and I was writing and speaking and blogging and all kinds of things on the subject of ordering your life. And so I started to build a media brand, really is what happened. And I started, you know, building, 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 and I ended up growing my little tiny company up to 10 people, and things started happening uh, for me. And, and, you know, as you're doing that, and you're growing your business, um, what happened for me, at least, is that, you know, I was raised by an entrepreneur, Patrice, and so I knew how to work. I knew how to work hard. And so I would work circles around other people. And I thought that was the way to build my brand. And so here I was building, 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 and eventually I just got tired. And around about 2007, before I met you in 2009, I figured I had built my business to the place that as far as I could take it. So I started, you know, a plan without many advisors fails, mm -hmm. right? So I started bringing in experts to help me. I brought in a strategic planner, capitalized my business, um, spent $45,000 with them, which is a lot for a small business. And in the end, they only polished the strategic plan I already had. <laughs> I hired a PR firm uh, because as I had done media tours and had been in New York and everything, um, you know, I thought, move over, Martha. You know, God wants his people at the top. <laughs> I'm building this brand and I need PR people. So I hired a PR firm. $19,000 later, mm. They got me a couple of interviews, but nothing I hadn't already gotten on my own. But I needed an agent, too, I figured. So I, I hired Bob Vila's agent, you know, the handyman guy? So I hired his agent. And $5,000 got me a couple of phone calls with him. So $75,000 later, I was in a little bit of pain. Because I love God. I was trying to grow business for him. I was trying to uh, do you know, I always called my business my stealth ministry, Patrice. Mm, mm, mm. And I was, but I was stuck. I couldn't push my business forward any further. I knew my gifts, skills, and abilities, but I could only take it so far. And at the end of this time, I just threw up my hands and I said, Lord, I'm trying to do this business for you, but I don't know what else to do. And that in walked Patrice. And this is kind of where many entrepreneurs find themselves. Um, and many times you don't know. Uh, they're Christian in some cases, or even non-Christian, but we're talking about the believers. They're stuck, don't know what the answer is, and don't even know how to apply the word that they know mm -hmm. to their everyday business that they do. And here is, you get into a biblical entrepreneurship class, and that kind of gets you into a certain, um, uh, kind of aligns you, if you will. Tell us about that experience. Okay, so I met Patrice and went through this biblical entrepreneurship training program, and for me, it was a tipping point in my life, because all of a sudden, you know, he, his curriculum is grounded in the Word of God, and I knew the Word, but no one had ever unpacked it for me as it meant for business, and I'm reading about the kingdom of God, and, and, and the Holy Spirit just began to work in my life, and I'm like, the kingdom of God, well, isn't that like heaven? <laughs> And what is this kingdom of God, and what is this doing business in the kingdom of God? 
And the Holy Spirit just began to draw me. And you have 11 points about being spirit-led. And I knew that I had the Holy Spirit. I knew it was a deposit guaranteeing what is to come. I knew about God. I had a relationship with God. But I knew I didn't have what that curriculum was talking about. And so I discovered some, that a few things were missing from my business. Vicky, tell us about it. You know, as Vicky shares, uh, again, if we're going to really fulfill the call to business, we have to be recognize that many of the entrepreneurs, whether in the U.S. or internationally that we're dealing with, who call themselves Christian, are the very thing that was missing for Vicky may be missing for them. And we have to look beyond the external success and really discern the true success of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. If you could tell us about what was missing. So I realized that I had been building my empire. You know, and frankly, I didn't think there was anything wrong with that. I was building for God, and I looked around, and you know one of my pet peeves with the body of Christ, you know, we are cheesy and cheap for the most part. When you look around at the landscape of Christian businesses, it's like it is cheese whiz. It is not professional. It's embarrassing sometimes to see what goes on in the body of Christ. And I thought, I'm going to professionalize professional organizing. This is not going to be a hobby. We're going to do it, and we are going to take this mountain. We're going to bag it, tag it, and take it home. <laughs> and that is how I wanted to run my business. Well, Patrice, I was, I was only about 2% off. But in the trajectory, that 2% gets you further and further away. And really what, what the Lord used your curriculum to put his finger on in my business was not that I didn't have this big dream in my heart and I was built for the Olympics, because I was. I was. But it was the fact that the motivation of my heart was not always first to serve. The motivation of my heart towards my employees was not always right. Um, see, I didn't know about the kingdom, okay, because it's hidden in the word of God. I did not know that God had a plan upon the earth, a purpose on my life that was totally unique, that he wanted to engage me for his purposes, not have me, well-intentioned Christian, building, 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 trying to do good for God. So I traded big for great. But first I needed that heart transplant, that mind transplant. I had to renew my mind. How many Christians do you know who are in business? Good Christian, tithing members, serve in the church, but yet they're stuck in that very same place. They have not yet made a connection uh, between the kingdom reality and the very church they practice on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, Vicki, one of the things that you talked about was the whole idea of alignment. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a bit about, you know, the, how that worked for you in terms of that alignment as you seek to trade big for great. Okay. Well, I was saved at 15 years old, and for 21 years I had been a Christian at that point mm -hmm. when I met you. But I have only been awake for two. I did not know about the kingdom, and the kingdom makes all the difference. And for me, what I've begun to understand about the kingdom is that when you align to him and you come into agreement, you order into his plan, then you can get back to the garden design that he made you for. And when you align with that, I'm telling you, resources come to you. The Lord himself picks up the road and moves it to you because he will not work against himself. So I found the difference between churchianity and the kingdom. And all I know is churchianity, I want my money back. <laughs> because I'm telling you what, we have got to wake up. And when I have come to call to all and when I have come to things like this, I love that we are going out there and trying to get to unreached people groups. But let me tell you, what about the rest of the body of Christ that is laying asleep on the battlefield? We have got to go wake up the everyday people like me who really did love God but did not understand what I was working towards. The biggest I could think was, move over, Martha Stewart. I'm coming on up. But I, that's because I didn't know there was the kingdom. Mm. That's what alignment is about. Truth be told, the real mission of Call to All is about reaching the lost in the marketplace, not those who don't know Jesus but those who have not yet made the connection between their calling and the vocation that they practice every day. 
and recognize that because once that alignment takes place, whatever success, no matter how great it is for the purposes of realizing the kingdom. Now, Vicky, tell us practically what you have a kingdom business. What does that really mean for you practically on a day-to-day basis for your company? Well, I used to say that my business is my stealth ministry. And we really did try to be a Christian business. We, you know, were excellent. We practice great stewardship. That's the founding principle of my organizing company is to help people do that. So we did that internally. But now I've kingdomized my business, Patrice. At every level, I've looked at what is the what is the kingdom impact to me, the steward of this business, to my employees, to our clients, to our constituents. We've now discovered uh, through the leading of the Holy Spirit, what are the three core purposes of my business? And here's what they are. The three core purposes are to pull people out of the bondage of disorder because we truly believe that people are asleep. They're in bondage to many, many things, and one of them is a life out of control. Secondly, to teach good stewardship. And thirdly, to end hopelessness. Those are the purposes of my company. And now everything we do, we align through those purposes. So we internally kingdomized our business And now I've begun to pull the treasure out of my employees. Mm. Now I want to discover what God put in them to do and give them opportunity to do that in this job um, that they have. And we are a team. I have the best team I've ever had. Because funny thing happens with alignment. That's right. When the leader aligns. Everything else happens. Now, beyond that, you then begin to share this with others. You actually Mm -hmm. sponsored a training class. You your scholarship, your, your employees to actually take the training themselves. Tell us about what motivates you not to go beyond just kingdomizing your business to now wanting to see others. Well, in our, in our company, we have now a fund where, for our employees to uh, grow spiritually, um, and that's, that's really important to our company. And so we're doing that. Uh, we're doing a lot of different things I don't have time to talk about, but what you're talking about is now I teach biblical entrepreneurship because once you get the kingdom and you've awakened, you want to pour it out as fast as you can. And the faster my husband and I do this and we host, uh, we disciple people in our home, we teach them biblical entrepreneurship, we teach them kingdom principles, uh, we want to help them find their purpose. That's something I'm passionate about. The faster you pour that out, man, the faster he pours it in. And I'm telling you, wealth is coming our way. The Lord is, we are experiencing the kingdom economy. It's now, incredible. Speaking of wealth, talk to us a bit about that. What unlocked for you as you were aligning mm-hmm. this thing up? Kind of. Well, first I'm going to share a little bit about um, just a little, I think, of value here for people that they might appreciate. This um, caboose here, this train picture that I have up here, if you can think about it this way, it's Matthew 6, We all know, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all of these things will be given to you as well. If you're driving your life with your caboose, trying to get your needs met, okay, then you're never going to have your business in order. But when we can drive with the engine of his kingdom, follow it with the car of knowing his righteousness, which belongs to me by the grace and sacrifice of Christ, then we're going to be getting things in the right order, and then the caboose will follow. See, we are an answer, not a need. And that is what we are pouring out to our students. And I tell them, you're not getting out of my class until you understand your righteousness, until you understand that God himself has a plan over your life. Mm. Now, as you heard Vicki's story, the reality is uh, good Christian folks will not bring about transformation Amen. and marketplace change. Uh, you know, you heard the story, the, the good guys, all, you know, in the movie, the good guys kind of always you know, end up in trouble. Well, that's kind of how good Christian folks, what's going to require are transform individuals who have a zeal to bring transformation in individuals' lives mm-hmm. and in culture. And that's kind of what happened to, mm-hmm. to Vicki. That's right. And God is really looking for that, um, that dual transformation. He wants us to have that mind and heart transplant where he does the work in our own soul. He deals with the inner man. But he also wants us to run excellent, scalable, sustainable businesses so that we can truly stand out in the marketplace. Okay. And really, you can get the kingdom, but if you have a schlocky business, what are we really communicating about being God's people, mm-hmm. right? And you can have an excellent moral business. But on the other hand, if you don't know what you're doing it for, which is where I was at, I didn't know about his kingdom. I was building my empire to try to glorify him. I mean, I was just two degrees off, but it made all the difference. 
made all the difference. Now, let's go straight to the model in terms of how that occurs. Um, if, if you look there on your screen, let's go straight to the model, giving our time. If, if you look there on your screen, one of the things that, as Vicky talked about, the whole idea of building a scalable, profitable, and sustainable business, uh, she's very right. It, again, if we are to realize our purpose is called it all, uniquely called to business, it's got to be about building businesses. And I think one of the challenges historically with the business as mission movement is that uh, the business was a means to an end. Mm -hmm. The business must be the end. Yeah. And that business must be the vehicle for transformation. And so the question becomes, how do we do that, whether in the United States or any other parts of the world? Well, you can't see it there. But, but we believe that there are three kinds of people who will be part of a call to business movement. Those individuals who are looking to start businesses, those individuals who already have businesses and are doing like Vicky and doing pretty well financially, um, and those individuals but, but need that alignment, and those individuals, or may need some enhancement, and those individuals who might need some further support. And so the first thing is that they have to be disciples. Uh, they have to go through the process of discipleship, and the way we do it is, is uh, in three parts, principle, practice, and planning. They must understand the prince of the kingdom. That's where the alignment takes place, and they must understand business practices. How do you now incorporate best business practices in line with kingdom principles? And by the way, most if not all business pra best practices comes from the word of God. The world did not invent anything new. Then the next element is planning. And that they have to be discipled and trained how to now develop a comprehensive either strategic plan or operational business plan that encompasses God's calling and God's experiences in their lives. Most business plans only limit itself to the formation of the business. Well, that's not a kingdom plan. So as we seek to disciple and I seek to raise up transforming agents around the world, we must make sure that when we're looking to their business plan, that it reflects what God has done in their lives in the kingdom impact that will occur as that transforming agent succeeds. Patrice, can you close us out here with just a few words about how biblical entrepreneurship is being replicated in the U.S. and around the world through churches, through higher education, through governments, through other countries? Well, let me take the example of what's going on in Orlando, where First Presbyterian Church in Orlando has taken upon themselves to do what they call Be Orlando. And what they want to do is to equip, they have some of the most successful business people in their church, uh, in the city, and they want to disciple them so that they can be transforming agent in that city, as well as they're also doing the same thing in Madagascar. They want to connect their business people with the business folks in Madagascar because there we're working with the largest church in that nation, family and people, and they're seeing themselves as if we can transform our business people, we can transform the nation. Amen. Our time is up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, don't get up so quick. Uh, we may have some questions. Any uh, thank you, Patrice and Vicky. That was awesome, and I enjoy your format too. Um, any questions from the audience? We haven't gotten any tweets in yet. But I know Trista Sue is kind of chomping at the bit to ask a few <laughs> questions because she was shaking her head and going, mm hmm. So uh, let me, yeah, I'm going to put you on the spot. Here you go. <laughs> All right. Vicki, would you like to perhaps enlighten us? You mentioned something very interesting to me. You said that the kingdom of God is hidden. Can you expound on that? Yeah, you know, <laughs> I seriously, I have been a Christian now for 23 years, and I know the Word of God. It's written in my heart, and I know the Word, but I had not understood what the kingdom is all about. And what I have discovered is that His kingdom is His plan upon the earth. It's not heaven. It's not that Jesus just came for salvation, which he did do, but that was one of the presents under the Christmas tree. We just forgot to pick up righteousness. We forgot to pick up that our spirit man is totally regenerated, that we are no longer prone to sin, that we can walk in um, as, 
as God on the earth. We can walk as his agents here on earth and that I'm seated in the heavenlies. That's what it means when it says that our righteousness, um, that we are to pursue our righteousness, his righteousness, and that we are made in his image and likeness. And so it took me a long time to discover it, but once I discovered it, I'm starting to read the word. It's like the, the veil just got pulled off my eyes, Trista Sue, and I'm like, this is a kingdom book. <laughs> just read Matthew. If you don't know what I'm talking about, read Matthew. And Ask the Holy Spirit for revelation because it has changed my entire life. This is why a lot of people don't want to go to church, by the way, yeah. because uh, they're, they feel like they're missing something. I wrote, um, I wrote on a program at church about a year and a half ago or two years ago before I learned about the kingdom to my husband, and I said, I feel like I'm drinking through a sippy cup. Mm. And turns out I was. I did not have the kingdom. One of the bif- biggest differences or paradigm shifts that I had in my life when I also discovered the kingdom is whereas before my focus was on heaven mm. and, okay, making sure I'm getting there and making sure everybody else is getting there. But when you understand the kingdom of God, because Jesus' prayer was asked, Lord, don't take them from here. That's right. Mm-hmm. Okay, he said, occupy till I come. Right. So then my focus became on occupy earth he gave right. me dominion the earth has been given to man right. yeah and i said "Ooh, i'm here to take charge let's take care of business right. i love al he's like one billion people that's just great but if he was focused on heaven you know so much let's get out of here mm-hmm. it's an escapism mentality mm-hmm. that's right then how can you take care of business here on earth that's so right. that was the biggest transformation uh, paradigm shift i had in my life mm-hmm. when i started to understand it's made the biggest difference then you become effective here on earth for the kingdom of God, rather than let's store up and stockpile and get out of (laughs) here. That's right, and we're not on a zip line to heaven. And you know, and I love evangelism, don't get me wrong. We need to reach people. I pray for divine appointments every time I fly. I want to get people saved. However, however, Jesus came to restore the kingdom and the dominion mandate, and that's why we're here. So yeah, it's been a it's been a major tipping point in my life. I want to share one thing, if it's okay, about what this looks like practically in my business. I don't know if that would help anybody, but now that I um, now that I understand being spirit led um, in my business, we be, we had have had issues like everyone else in the last three years. I mean, I run a consulting firm; it's professional services, and so our business was down oh probably about sixty six percent in the last three years. Um, overall, but our net has remained stronger and stronger. I have the best team that I've ever had by God's grace. Um, We're beginning to walk in and experience the kingdom economy, and and I've asked the Lord, okay, now what do we do about generating business? How can we reactivate some old clients of ours and really steward, you know, our constituents? I was just praying, praying into this matter, and, and literally the Holy Spirit gave me a vision, and the vision was our client services manager with a little helmet on going down into the mine shaft and and because we always say we need to mine our database you know so she had a pair of tweezers and a spoon in her hand (laughs) going down into the mine shaft i was like okay that's funny holy spirit what does that mean (laughs) and it was clear that we didn't have the right tools we were not reaching our constituents with the right tools so i said okay give me i love what you shared about pray for ideas i prayed for ideas and the holy spirit brought us an idea of bringing uh, back, b- literally doing a mailing campaign of postcards, postcards that ended hopelessness. So we designed a whole postcard campaign around our purpose, which is to pull people out of, um, you know, bondages to disorder, teach them stewardship and hopelessness. And they say things like courage, uh, give. Uh, they say things like joy, and um, and this whole campaign is going into their homes instead of the phone and email, and, and people are putting them on their refrigerators, and they're these inspiring things. We just pray. The last one, last month, was forgive. And it had a quote by Mark Twain about uh, forgiveness is the fragrance of the violet that is shed upon the heel that has crushed it. So we've got these meaningful things, and you're thinking, a professional organizing company? Why are you sending out postcards like that? No, no, we know that our purpose is to go into the lives of haphazard, out-of-control people and to pull them out of hopelessness. But that's only by the Holy Spirit that we could have an idea like that. And I'll tell you what, there's a practical part of it, too. I did the numbers. I did the numbers. It brought us a month's worth of business. Without that, we wouldn't have the net we have today. So we're given ideas that that align to our purpose, um, and they actually produce sustainability. 
I think to reinforce that, no matter the economy, you still got to be a minister. That's right. You know, I mean, Jesus didn't say, uh, you know, guys, the economy is bad. Let's shut down. <laughs> you know, actually, when the economy is bad, that's when the kingdom mm-hmm. thrives even more so. So if, if the economy mm-hmm. is impacting your activities, then you're not aligning with purpose. Mm-hmm. Then r- rise to a higher purpose. The other thing I want to add to what Trista pointed out is, when that revelation comes, you also read the Bible differently. You yeah. start seeing what you say, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is a light. The kingdom of God is light. What he's trying to do is teach us kingdom strategies that we might implement to take reign of this kingdom. That's right. Um, and now people are looking to us as we're doing this. There's a shift that's happened internally. Now people are calling us and, and reaching out to us. It, it's an attractant. That's right. The kingdom is so, it's a fragrance. It's attractive. And it will draw people to you because they want the hope that you have. That's great. Thank you, guys. Uh, just out of curiosity, on your radio show, is there an opportunity to call in or is it or not? It's pre-taped, uh, but you, one can make comments on our Facebook All right. uh, page. Uh, and uh, you can just go to Kingdom Business Forum. Uh, Facebook at Kingdom Business, whatever that. Yeah, you go to Facebook (laughs) and type in Kingdom Business Forum, and all of our radio shows are out there. And also, we have a YouTube channel now, which is KB Forum. So Kingdom Business Forum um, on YouTube and on Facebook, and we interview different Kingdom businesses. And you do have on your tables some evaluations. Uh, Just take a look at them, fill them out for us, so that we can see how we can serve you better and engage you. Uh, we did a whole series one month on Al Caperna's business. You know, he's a hidden secret out in Ohio. Uh, humble man, but to a fault. Uh, you know, because imagine Jesus coming, showing up and hiding his talents, right? You know, uh, so, so I think that Al has done a unique job, not only in his hometown city in Ohio, but using that platform, that was kind of his, his backwoods where God prepared him to now shepherding this movement around uh, the world. And so we did a whole series. Yeah, uh, we flew out to Ohio and went to Bowling Green and got to his company and got to interview his employees uh, and his heart to heart program and yeah. Affirm Global, it was awesome. So if you wanna see a practical, uh, hear a practical functionality of another kingdom business with the various dimensions, uh, go and do a search for that for that particular series uh, so you can uh, not only learn our story, but also glean from that. 